Okay, hi and welcome to Monday, April the 6th. And Mondays we talk about camera technique. I'm Michael Bean, and uh, this is the, the second week we've been doing this. The, I like to start with this because this is the medium that we're working in. You know, and all of you uh, have different backgrounds, but if we can start with what does the camera see and how do we take advantage of it, you know, then maybe that helps with the kind of work that we're doing. So one of the really simplest setups uh, that's useful to talk about, you know, and something that, uh, that I covered last week in more detail, if you want to uh, find us on YouTube or on the Facebook page, uh, it's facebook.com slash bizstudio. You can watch last week's detailed uh, camera breakdown, but in uh, super simple terms, um, the, we want to talk about the uh, eye light, the sound, the frame. Um, so one of the things that's important if you're uh, setting up, and especially in a taping setup at home, is that there be an undistracting background behind you. you know, and I could make this more distracting on purpose. I could go like, oh, look. Nah, nah, nah. You know, but the thing is that if I'm here, you know, the risk is that not only am I at a weird angle, you know, but it's like, ooh, there's all these interesting things behind me that you're going to want to look at instead. Uh, so ideally, you get set up against a black uh, bank, blank wall or as close as you can get to it uh, with uh, a light reflected in your eyeballs. This is really important. Uh, currently, I have like a, a little studio light, but it can be a desk lamp. It can be anything that you put directly behind the... Uh, um, the webcam or directly behind you know, whatever device you've got. So shining your eyeballs so you get a reflection. You know, and if you want to do some multitasking while you hear me talk about this, you can play with your setup at home. You can move your, where is your laptop? And do you have a desk lamp that you can put directly behind it? You know, if you're using a phone, like can I prop the phone up on a stack of books or something so that I can get as neutral a backdrop as possible behind me and a light reflected in my eyes? Because one of the things that we can talk about after I'm done the lecture portion is like, what about this setup? And we can look at your setup you know, uh, and I can give you some advice on it. Because Auditions at home are, I mean, obviously in the next couple of months, going to be almost the only option. You know, but even after that, now that everybody knows how easy it is to run a session by Zoom, you know, and um, the and actors are progressively having to make self tapes, this is going to be a thing. You know, in our acting for the next, like for the next three months possibly for the next two years, possibly from here forward. Voiceover artists have been doing their auditions at home for a very long time. They, uh, they only go to studios for callbacks. There's been speculation about film and TV auditions moving that direction for a long time. So I wonder if this three or four month period where auditions have to be like this and uh, submissions from tapes, that people are making at home. I wonder if that's going to be the thing that pushes us over the edge to first round of auditions, all self tapes, and the second round of auditions, callbacks. There's no way to know for sure. But figuring out how to do an amazing self tape at home, really a good idea right now. So the eye light's really important. If I turn off all of my eye lights here, I probably can't turn them all off because I'm away from the window. What you'll see is that the less eye light I have, and I can probably try and put myself in the shade even more. Uh, the less eye light I have, the more dead I look on camera there. See how there's no light reflected in my eyes? It's not terrible. You know, it's just that this little sparkle is something that we really associate with quality film and TV and also with print media. It's just what makes somebody look alive. You know, so you wanna make sure that there's, like I said, a desk lamp or something that's like right behind where your camera is pointing to, or better yet, if you're basically putting your device directly in front of a big window. So the, the big window right behind it, shining in your eyes. That'll give you sort of good general lighting. That's most of the, most of what I've got in the room right now is natural light. You know, and then I'll have an, I have an eye light that I use to just pop it a little bit, but it doesn't have to be fancy equipment, nothing like that. You know, so that's the sort of technical setup. The, something that I didn't get to say last week that's really useful is if you are taping something that's uh, dialogue, most devices do not have a good microphone. So, um, I mean, if you were going to be taping a lot, then eventually you would want to invest in even a cheap microphone that you could plug into your USB port 
and you know, or plug in your phone or whatever it is you're using, you know, and sort of run over closer to you. But for right now, if you're doing something that's dialogue, just get whoever's reading with you to stand farther away from the camera than you are, considerably farther away. You know, so um, the what often happens uh, when somebody's like holding a phone and taping an audition is that then the person holding the phone who the camera can't see is way louder because they're right here beside the pickup and the person they're recording is too far away. So it's an easy, easy mistake to make when doing a self production. Uh, the, mostly what I want to talk about today is framing. And I went into some detail uh, last week, but I didn't have visuals to show you. So framing is what the camera sees and the framing for an audition is the uh, what's called the medium close-up MCU, uh, which is this, right? It's like the frame on the television, the frame on a picture. What is the camera seeing? And what you will notice, once you start looking at frame, you'll see it in every shot, the way that actors are using the frame. Actors who are very experienced know their frame and they adjust their performance to fit the frame. If, and the kind of performance that you uh, give for a medium close-up, you know, where you're going to bring your hands into the shot, you know, is different from the kind of performance that you give for a medium shot, you know, where we can see more of your body, right? I don't need to bring my hands up here. And in fact, if I do, it might look kind of odd. You know, so understanding this is what's called a medium shot, you know, where you can see down to my waist. You can't see as much of my eyes, you can't see as much of the eye light, which is why they don't do this in auditions. Typically, they'll use a medium shot uh, if there's action happening in the scene in some way, like if you have to move physically, you know, I'll, I'll frame that for an audition, often when people are starting their scenes. You know, or for commercials, you'll go in and they might do a medium shot because then there could be, you know, there could be two of us sitting next to each other. Uh, and we can and you can see both of us. But for commercials, uh, for commercials for film and TV, and for your self tapes, I recommend using what's called a medium close up, which is just like this. So let me pull up my handout, uh, the, which the internet provided me with. Uh, but I can put in the chat window momentarily. Um, the chat screen. and show you what I mean by frame size. Okay, so here is the framing for a typical audition is what's called a medium close-up. You know, close-up, we're zoomed in just on my head, junk. Big close-up, just my face. Extreme close-up, just my eyeballs. You know, not exactly. Now, this is only liable to happen in like a horror movie, you know, when they like, they start back here, and it's like, and everything goes still, and it pushes in and in and in, so you can see the fear in their eyes. But from here, what you'll notice, just play with your camera at home. Play with these frames as I'm talking about them so that you can uh, see what I'm doing. In an extreme close-up, even a tiny little movement of your eyeballs, that's about as much movement as you can do. You know, think about it, when you see people like you know, this, you're really watching their eyes, and every little movement of their eyes becomes information. You know, when you go into a medium close-up, your eyes are still very significant in the shot, especially because they're shiny, and we just naturally watch the shiny things, part of why eye light is so important. You know, the, and, and, um, but from here, it's, it's less of an issue if I'm moving my head, if I'm moving my shoulders, if I bring my hands in the shot. In fact, if I do those things, I'll look more like a human being. You know, a lot of the times, uh, actors who have taken but like a simpler class or they've read something simple online that says like acting for film, you have to be still. Yes, compared to theater, you know, but perfectly still. If I hold perfectly still in a medium close up, oh, I didn't do it. If I hold perfectly still even for a little while, it starts to be really weird. And the longer I do it, the weirder it seems. And actors often do this without even thinking about it when they're doing scenes is they hold perfectly still, but you can see if I do, if I do it, even for a minute while I'm talking, it feels strange and it looks strange. You know, so it's, so the short answer is, yeah, it's more still than theater. The long answer, the sophisticated answer, the answer that moves you towards the kind of professional auditions that you want to be able to do, you know, is that you want to adjust your performance for the size of the frame. So 
here we go, extreme close up and big close up and then close up. You're not going to do those in auditions, right? Medium close up is where most of your auditions are going to live. Some of them are going to live here in what's called a medium shot. Uh, the medium long shot, you know, only if you're going in for a commercial and you can see that, you know, there's space that they can fit like two or three or four people into the audition. You know, so if you're going in in a group, then probably you're in a medium long shot. And those of you who've been in my in-person classes, when we do those fun commercial exercises where like everybody's up on the mark together. Often you're in a medium long shot. You can see down below the waist. You know, and again, if somebody's lower half their body is just like perfectly still like a robot, you know, because they're, they're doing a performance that's a medium close-up performance. In a medium long shot, that looks really weird. Uh, long shot, you can see the whole body, very long shots, sort of pulled back, you know, so that you can see the environment. Uh, these, uh, I'm going to show you some examples, uh, two shot, you know, and this is, you know, could be close-up, medium close-up, medium shot, uh, but a two shot, two people in the frame. Often uh, on camera, those two people end up, uh, and those of you who've been on set have totally done this, um, the... Uh, think about, have, have you ever been on set, whether it's a professional set or a student film, and be asked to, to stand weirdly close to the person you're talking to, like weirdly close? And it's because often in uh, a two shot, right, in order for it to it's look like a normal conversation, you know, if we're in a close up or a, or a medium close up, you know, then suddenly the other person's face, so their head can be seen, is here. Now that's actually about, what is that? 10 centimeters away from my nose, that's very uncomfortably close to someone. But when you're watching television, it's actually totally normal. When you're watching television, it is totally normal to see somebody this far away. You know, and so actors are, often have to cheat their performance for the frame. And that's something that like, once you're on set, you've got a director, you've got a DOP, they are doing some of the setup. But the more you know about that, the more you can take advantage of it, and the more you can adjust your performance. So, oh, the other thing from the sheet was what's called an over-the-shoulder shot. You know, where you've got essentially got one person who's you're seeing over their shoulder, and then uh, and so the person who's the the shoulder often has to be extra still, you know, because the focus is on the person behind them. You know, those uh, you'll see those in uh, in film all the time. And so I pulled some examples of those from. Uh, I was like, well, what might be fun? Like what might, you know, some solid percentage of the people watching recognize? And so I went and uh, found the trailer for Netflix's uh, To All the Boys I've Loved Before. You know, and I went through and I just took some screenshots, you know, so that you can, uh, we can look at those uh, for uh, what kind of shot they are. So let's go with that. Okay, so two shot, we have a nice wide two shot. You know, this is, you know, uh, the, like she's in a medium close up, you know, because it's a feature, it's, you know, sort of zoomed quite out. Television, I think we would find, uh, you know, what a, oh, like this is Netflix, not this is Netflix. So, okay. Um, this is at least, you know, on the sheet that we looked at would be called a very long shot, because really what we're seeing here mostly is her room, right? That's, you know, the, what's being featured. Uh, medium shot down to her waist, uh, medium close up, you know, typical audition framing, uh, medium shot, you know, down to his waist, medium close up. You know, the, again, this is uh, not just about this girl who's up here. You know, this is about sort of everything that's happening. So, as far as the girl's concerned, this is a, a long shot. You know, we're seeing her whole body. And then they cut to closer to her, almost uh, the uh, I think it was either immediately before or immediately after. So we can see how she's feeling you know, without all the environment. You know, and so here we get uh, the uh, medium uh, shot or medium long, you know, because so we're seeing down to, you know, about her knees. Okay, medium shot, very long shot, long shot, two shot, medium close up, right? The, and, Getting nice and close like this is for seeing detail about how somebody is feeling, and that's why you want to set up your auditions like that. To have that. Now, the other thing, and I didn't have time to uh, completely look through this, but um, the thing that I thought might be interesting to look at you know, is 
Uh, last week, uh, one of the exercises that we looked at an audition scene on the Thursday when we were talking about story from a movie called If I Stay. You know, so uh, I got a copy of it. And, uh, and so I wanted to find uh, some scenes you know, where we could turn the sound off. And let me see if I can just turn the sound off on this. I'm sure I can. Uh, the, uh, and look at what the actors are doing with the, uh, in their work uh, with the frame. You know, and so this, I didn't know this actor before, but I looked him up, IMDb. Uh, if I stay, his name is Stacy Keach, who plays Gramps. Uh, and he's got 214 credits on IMDb. Uh, going back to, oh my gosh, here we go, way down all the way to well before I was born at 1964. You know, so that means that here's somebody who's been acting for uh, coming up on 60 years, 56 years as of this year. You know, and uh, the reason that this little clip stood out for me is because it changes frames and what he's doing changes. This is a highly emotional scene. You know, it's his, him and his granddaughter, you know, her parents are dead. You know, he's in the hospital just, you know, basically saying, you, you can, uh, you know, uh, it's your choice if you want to like stay here or if you want to move on to the next life. Yeah, you know, and we're watching with the sound off. And so you, you can see that you know, here, he's using his whole body because he's in that long shot. You know, and, uh, and then once he's here, he's very still, like he's moving his shoulders, you know, but he's not waving his hands around, he's not doing anything crazy again, you know, medium close up, right? So the angle of his head, what he's doing with his eyes, these are important things that he is using to help tell the story. You know, he's not perfectly still by any uh, stretch, you know, but he is using what you can use in the medium close up, which is, where you're looking, your shoulders, your eyes. And then as soon as we see the long shot, he's making sure to use his body just a little bit, you know, but enough that we're like, oh, this is a real human. This isn't an actor who's just standing there doing a the thing. You know, and I would say that after 55 years of practice, it's very unlikely that this is something that he is like going through and marking in his script in detail. This is somebody who's really internalized these skills. Uh, but start looking for this, you know, today when you're watching some kind of media, uh, especially after you've watched it, so you have the chance to just like go along the ride with the story, go back and watch some little piece of it with the sound off and look for what am I actually seeing the actor do? How are they conveying the story using the frame? How are they using their face and their body to tell the story here? So that is my spiel on size. This was Monday talking about how to be on camera. The, uh, I'm Michael Bean. It's a uh, confidence on camera tutorial. I'm going to have this posted on to YouTube and onto our Facebook uh, channel, uh, channel, Facebook page, uh, facebook.com slash biz studio, B-I-Z studio. Uh, in mere moments. You know, so now that that piece is done, let me unmute everybody. I think I just did wrong. Well. Uh, and see if you have questions about framing. So yeah, Zara. Question about frame. But are you in 1922 also? Yes. Okay. Yeah, for, for like that long. You know, the, what you'll find, see in uh, Vancouver is that a lot of the, the, the leads or like, you know, like the top few cast, uh, from, those are often cast elsewhere and then supporting characters are often cast here. Uh, the, I mean, they're, they're, to, they're totally exceptions. You know, um, uh, kids, uh, kids shows. The audience is kids. You know, they're going to cast young people, you know, and they're more likely to cast young people as leads because it's just so much more expensive for them to bring in somebody who is under eighteen and their mom and fly them in from LA and put them both up at a hotel and pay for a tutor and all that kind of stuff. Uh, 
the, uh, so that's, that's one of the reasons why there's good opportunities for folks your age. Uh, did anybody, uh, let's, let's check out everybody's uh, setup. Yeah, so uh, Leah, for instance, let's, uh, let's spotlight Leah for a second. Uh, you can see that she's backlit, you know, like she's got a, a light that's, instead of being behind the camera, the light is behind her head. And so not only does she not have an eye light, but there's this sort of like blinding light shining right in the camera. You know, it's probably not a good idea. You know, for uh, if you're setting up, but yeah, but if you just flip around so the light shines in your eyes, see, already that's better. You know, like the light now, the light's overhead, so um, it's coming down on your head, that's why your eyes are shadowed. You know, but if you were setting up for an audition, you just want to make sure there was some kind of light coming at your eyeball. And this wouldn't be the place where I would set up for an audition, no, of course not. No, of course not. Um, the Okay, anybody else want to throw questions uh, at me before we, uh, we wrap up? The, if you have the chance to come early tomorrow, uh, I would love to hear what you notice when you're watching media today. You know, if there are things that particularly stand out for you about seeing other people work with the frame, you know, and the creative ways in which they do that. You know, I can say that as a teacher and as an audition coach, I will often, when I'm also working more directly with somebody on audition, I'll often get them to bring their hands into the frame because it's just so wonderfully expressive. It sort of breaks it up. You know, in a multi-minute scene, if we're just seeing this, the, the just like a moment of that, if you're not used to doing it on camera, working online like this is a fantastic way to experiment. Because look, everybody bring your hands into the shot right now in some way. Right? Yeah. Right? Yeah, and you, just, and you just play with it. You know, so you're like, okay, yeah, it feels weird, but does it look weird? No, actually, huh. I mean, this feels really odd, but actually it looks kind of cool. And what sort of feeling does it convey to the camera? You know, so before we even get into breaking down the feelings and finding it from the inside, one of the things that we can look at is what helps tell the story on the camera and how do I be aware of that? But if, if Leah's doing a scene, she's got her hands tucked under her chin like that, you know, then it gives us feeling information without having to do any work. And so very often, the way that you use the frame helps you emotionally tell the story and makes your job as an actor even easier. You know, now, um, the next time you're on set, you know, the, I would strongly recommend Okay, so if you're on a if you're on an indie set, you know this is uh, is not as relevant. But if you're on a professional film set, uh, they will have stand-ins whose job it is to stand there while they set up the camera and the lighting. You know, and so the next time you're on set, you know the uh, once they say okay, your first team, you can relax. Instead of just kind of going back to your trailer or chilling out, walk around to where the monitors are and check out the framing on the stand-ins because that's going to help you uh, adjust your performance. And that's one of those things, the sort of like next level professional tweaks that you can do to make your performance better. Because then you don't have to just magically know how to use the frame. In a professional situation, there's always going to be setup time. You know, and so instead you can go around to Video Village you can like look at the stand and go, okay, we can see this much of their body or we can see this much of their body. You know, so if I've got a wave, if I've got to check the clipboard, you know, do I, check the clipboard? or if I've got to check the clipboard, do I <clears throat> check the clipboard? And either way, I don't have to just magically know that because I can check it for myself. You know, same thing when you're uh, prepping your audition script. When, if you're taping an audition at home, you turn on the, uh, you turn on uh, Zoom or iMovie or whatever you use to record, even if not recording it, just mark through your scene physically and think about how my scene is shot to my advantage when I'm telling the story. All right. The, I'll, I'll have to ask Lincoln you know, if uh, this meets his desire for, uh, shorter end details, but I feel good about what we got accomplished today. Uh, it, okay, 
uh, open season, you know, the, uh, do you have any questions for me, even if they're not about uh, the uh, you know, camera and framing? Okay, great. Oh, yeah, Leah? Um, I have a question. Please. How do you get, it's a screenplay, like, produced? How do you get it? Oh, you mean like you've, you're, you're writing one and you want to know how to get it produced? The, I have like that much information about it, you know, but I'll say first that it's not something that I've ever done. So I don't have experience doing it. I just have heard other people talk about the experience. Oh, okay. Okay. So typically um, you either have a, a script idea that you, uh, that you pitch to people and then they're like, yes, we definitely want that script, you know, and uh, you know, somebody hires you to write it for them. Or you write an entire script and then you start shopping it around. Yeah, and so you go to places like the BAMP Film Festival, you know, where they have forums specifically for people who are trying to pitch stories, to sit down at a table with a bunch of producers and people who work at different TV, um, production companies, you know, Netflix and Hulu and all those places and say, here's my idea, here's my story, here's what it's about, you know, and they just sort of try and put together a good pitch so that if somebody's interested, they're like, cool, that's a cool idea. Let me see what it looks like. Like, show me the script. You know, so basically you hustle until somebody who is in a position to buy your script is excited about it and buys it and then they start making it. Or, you know, if you're doing it completely on your own, well, it's a, just a totally different answer. You know, then like you start recruiting everybody who you possibly can, who loves you and will work for free uh, and uh, try and shoot it uh, in as creative a way as you can. Okay, thank you. And, and if you decide to do that second thing, then let me put you in touch with a student of mine, Justin, who's, he, uh, he's only 13, but he's already won some awards for the short films that he's made. And he just okay. won like zero budget, just all himself. You know, so that he's somebody who's like, he's in your age range, who's got experience doing that, who could talk to you about like, what helps and what makes it successful and what he wishes he'd known before he shot his first one and stuff like that. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, sorry, I didn't, did you have a question or were you just waving? Oh, no, I'm fine. <laughs> okay, um, great. Well, let's wrap it there, you know, and uh, like I said, I will be here at 10 minutes to one tomorrow. Uh, and I would love it, you know, if there, uh, if uh, you have pieces of like using the frame that you witnessed in media that you want to talk about. Uh, in fact, you know, screen sharing from uh, your computer, from your device uh, to this is really straightforward. So you can, there's only a couple of us, you, we could even get you to share with us and you could show us, say like, look at this moment, isn't this so great? Uh, that'd be great for everybody. Okay, uh, until tomorrow. Thank you. Bye, thank you.